Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning, I'd like to read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 25 and read 25 through 33, and this is what it says. In Jerusalem lived a man named Simeon, who was a good man and godly. He was waiting for the time when God would take away Israel's sorrow, and the Holy Spirit was in him. Simeon had been told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he saw the Christ promised by the Lord. The Spirit led Simeon to the temple. When Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus to the temple to do what the law said they must do, Simeon took the baby in his arms and thanked God. Now, Lord, you can let me, your servant, die in peace, as you said. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you prepared before all people. It is a light for the non-Jewish people to see and an honor for your people, the Israelites. Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what Simeon had said about him. Pray with me. Lord, Mary and Joseph were amazed. And this day, let amazement, let worship, let praise be a, be a part of your spirit joining with our spirit. And then we respond to your presence. And not leave this day the same. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I was noticing recently how much words have changed over the years. You know, it, it, it used to be that tweet was something that only birds did. Now people do it with their phones. And Twitter used to be something that your heart did. But now people blow up Twitter and and it's not violent at all. And there was a time when Google was a noun. And it was a word that was mostly only known by mathematicians. A Google is a number. It's a one with a hundred zeros after it. But now Google is a verb. It's something that we do. I was Googling the other day. I was Googling what, what are the greatest fears that people have. And I found out that the number one greatest fear people have is fear of public speaking. And then I was going on down through the, the fears, and it's about number four or five greatest fear is the fear of, of dying. And I was trying to put all that together to understand it, and, and it hit me. It hit me that, you know, it, it's more stressful to be the person giving the eulogy at the funeral than it is to be the person in the casket at a funeral. <laughs> well, if you've ever given a eulogy at a funeral, you you know how stressful that is. Trying to sum up a, a, a life in a handful of words, in a few words, in, in, in thousands and thousands of words. Trying to sum up a life in words is just stressful. But that's what Simeon is doing right here. This old man is, is holding the baby Jesus in his arms, not at the end of his life, but at the beginning of his life. And he's trying to, to sum up that life in, in words. In words. And it says that, that Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what Simeon had said about him. That the parents were amazed. 
Usually it's the parents that look into the face of a baby and they see a baby blowing bubbles and they say, isn't he smart? He's thinking math. Well, that, it's, it's usually it's only the parents that say, but this time it's an old man named Simeon that sees what others can't see in the face of a baby. Well, how is it that this old man's eyes were able to see what others couldn't see? How is it that that Simeon could see what others missed. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That's what I want to talk about. Starting at verse 25, this is what it says. It says, he was waiting for the time when God would take away Israel's sorrow. Well, he was able to see what others missed. It's because he was waiting. He was waiting on God. He was doing some godly waiting. And that's, that's something that we should never take lightly. It's a... It's a Godly waiting. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not grow tired. That strength and renewal come from a godly waiting. Well, if ever there were a word that's against our culture, it's that word waiting. I don't know if you've noticed, but around a stoplight... People aren't at their best. Yeah, when that light goes from red to green, the nanosecond after it turns green, people are on their horns. Waiting is not something that comes naturally. And this isn't talking about a natural waiting. This is a godly waiting. That's the kind of waiting. Waiting for God is a kind that that gives strength. And we should never take it lightly. Noah was 120 years old before it started raining. Abraham was 99 years old before he received the son of his promise. It was Joseph who was four and a half years in in jail before he was promoted from prisoner to being the second highest official in all of Egypt. The Israelites waited for 400 years in captivity before God sent Moses, who told Pharaoh, let my people go. And it was Jesus. It was Jesus. After his crucifixion, after he rose from the grave, that he he appeared to his disciples and he told them, stay in Jerusalem until you're clothed with power from on high. And the word stay, stay in Jerusalem, literally means sit. That it's in the sitting, that it's in the staying, it's in the waiting, in the waiting for God that we're renewed with a Holy Spirit power, a power that doesn't come naturally, a power that doesn't come most often at a red light. Because the way our motors go on the inside is rush, 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 busy, busy, busy. And if ever there's a word that, that, that maybe we could could hear this day, it's the word that God speaks to those who take time to listen. God speaks to those who take time to listen. A little while back, a friend stopped by the church to take me to lunch. He had just bought a new car, and uh, it was quite a car. It was a Dodge Viper, and I don't know if you know much about cars, but a Dodge Viper is quite a car. Uh, I have a little bit of a motorhead, and, and I was excited to see his car. I, it, I was oohing and on over it. And, and when he started driving us to lunch, I, at 35, we were fine. We were looking at each other. We were catching up, talking about family. At 65, he didn't ask for my help, but I thought he, he needed it. I kept my eyes on the road. We still talked a little bit, but I'll go ahead and tell you this morning at 110 miles an hour, all conversation ceased. <laughs> we quit looking at each other. We quit connecting in any way because everything was coming at us so fast. I even quit breathing. The speed that we're living this life, it's killing our souls. And God has more for you and me. God has more for you and me than rush, 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 and busy, busy, busy. 
that God speaks to those who take time to listen. And Simeon, he was a godly man who waited with a godly kind of waiting. God speaks to those who take time to listen. Second thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is, is verse 28. It says that Simeon took the baby in his arms and thanked God. Well, the reason that Simeon was able to see what others missed is, is that he chose to give God thanks. He chose. He chose to thank God. One of my favorite books is a, a little book by Viktor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl, before World War II, was a psychiatrist. But when the war broke out, he was arrested by the Gestapo, and he was thrown into concentration camp at Auschwitz. Well, he writes about his experience there at Auschwitz. And man's search for meaning as a... They went through the struggle there at Auschwitz. One of the stories he talks about is a story where the prisoners were, were marched out from the camp to a work site. They worked all day. It was raining. It was cold. They were exhausted, literally starving. And at the end of the day, the soldiers marched them back into the camp. They fell into their bunks, exhausted, hungry, cold and tired. And that's when one of the other prisoners ran into the barracks with an excited voice. He said, come see, come see, you have to see this. Well, the prisoners got up and they walked outside and there in the courtyard, they began to, to see up in the clouds that the sun was poking through the clouds and in the puddles there on the concrete courtyard, the shining and shimmering of the sun was something that they could that they got excited about. And this is what Viktor Frankl wrote. He said, we stood there marveling at the good, goodness of creation. We were tired and, could, and sick and were starving to death. We had lost our loved ones and never expected to see them again. Yet there we stood feeling a sense of reverence as old and formidable as the world itself. Being able to thank God over a puddle. It's a choice. It's a choice. So often we think gratitude comes from a surplus of toys or an excess of an abundance of things. But it's a choice. It's a choice to thank God in a puddle or in a pandemic. We're in a hard time. There's no denying it. But for those who have eyes to see, it's an opportunity to thank God. That His, his fingerprints are on every single person, every single thing around us, if we have eyes to see it. If we have the eyes of, of Simeon, we can see God not only in a puddle, not only in, not only in a pandemic, but in the faces, in the lives of a husband or a wife, a son or a daughter. We can see God in the, in the face of, of those who are around us, even in the life of a stranger. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't know that the will of God is stated any more plainly in the Bible than it is right there. That in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That in Christ Jesus, there's power, power that you and I don't have, power to choose thanks. Not to give thanks for the pandemic, but in the midst of the pandemic. To be able to have those eyes, those eyes of, of gratitude that see what's not readily apparent to others and to give thanks and to give thanks to God. Simeon had those eyes and you know, you and I can have those eyes too. 
Simeon could see what others missed because he chose to thank God. He chose to to do godly waiting. And the third thing that I want to talk about this morning, Simeon was able to see what others missed because Simeon was, was seeking hope. We are a people who are a seeking people, a searching people, people who like to ask. Yeah, Google, Google is one of the most profitable companies on the face of the earth because they're there for people who want to search. Search how much something ought to cost. Search for what best product it is to buy. Search for a good deal. Search for trivia. Search for eh, news on the latest crisis. We're a people who, who naturally, naturally, we tend to search. We tend to search. Read a story about uh, Arnold Palmer. He was invited by the, the king of Saudi Arabia to play exhibition golf there in Saudi Arabia. At the end of the exhibition tournament, the king was very impressed with Ar- Arnold Palmer, and he wanted to, to thank him for coming to his country. He wanted to thank him for, for playing golf there in front of him. So he says, told Arnold, Arnold Palmer he wanted to give him a gift. Arnold Palmer said, that's not necessary. Just being able to come to your country and, and play golf here, that's, that's enough. Well, the king said, I, I insist. Well, Arnie thought about it for a little bit, and he said, you know, now that I think about it, a golf club would be nice, a nice memento to have to remember the time that spent in your country and your hospitality. So sure enough, the next day, he received a golf club. A title to a thousand acres of well-manicured greens and fairways and a clubhouse. A golf club. That's what he received. A golf club. <laughs> and maybe, the, maybe the, the moral of the story is when you're standing before kings, don't think small. Simeon was standing before the king of kings and the lord of lords, and he wasn't thinking about searching for stuff. He wasn't searching for events. He wasn't searching trivia. He was looking into the face of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he was searching for hope. Hope. Hope in a time when sorrow would cease. That's what it says in verse 25. Hope for a time when he could see Salvation. The word literally means rescue. He was searching hope of salvation. He was seeking for a time of hope when both the the Jews and the non-Jews would come together to see the light of God together. You know, we have a something down deep in us that likes to seek, that likes to search, and especially in the hard time. We seek in science hope where sorrow and death will will come to an end. That in, in government, that we, we seek a time where the strife, the struggle, the enmity, and the contempt will come to an end. We seek rescue because naturally that's who we are. But whether we're seeking it in, in science or in government, Whether it's in a vote of the the left or the the right hand of Caesar, it's still Caesar. And though government is a good thing and science is a good thing, God has more for for you and me than that. And then before the King of Kings and before the Lord of Lords, hope has a name, and that name is Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, and in looking to the face of Jesus Christ, you and I have, have hope that on the cross that he wiped away all sorrow, not just the sorrow for today, not just the sorrow that, that, a, that a vaccine might, might, might wipe away until the next pandemic, but on the cross he wiped away sorrow from this day forever. That on the cross he wiped away he wiped away sin. That self-centeredness. The seeking of power that, that we all have deep down in us. It bubbles up and it's expressed well through government, both left and the right. That hope has a name. It's Jesus Christ. And on the cross, He wiped away the power of sin over you and for me. Because hope has a name, and that name is Jesus. That hope, hope is available to you and me. That on the cross, He, he, he wiped away the sorrow. He wiped away death. He wiped away the sin, the shame and the guilt. And when he rose from the grave, he gave that power to you and to me. A power. It's not available through medicine. It's not available through government. It's not available through our own self-interest. It's available through Jesus Christ. And the power of his Holy Spirit is available to you today. And maybe that you've never invited Jesus to make his home in your heart and you've not known that power in your life. I'd like to invite you in prayer to invite him to make his home right there in your heart this day. Pray with me. Jesus, we stand before the King of kings and the Lord of lords and often we think small. That your power, your power is more than we can imagine. Your spirit gives us strength that's more than we can ever know. Lord, grant us grace enough to, to experience your strength, the power of your Holy Spirit this day, not one day, but this day. That in this hard, this difficult time, we may be able to, to deepen, to strengthen, to walk in that relationship with you and be forever changed. To know what it's like to have our sin, our sorrow, to have shame, guilt wiped away once and for all. You did that on the cross. And this day, may we know what it is to to have a relationship with you and walk with you and this day forward and all the days to come that we might have a, in you a hope not just one day but an eternal hope that goes on from this day and, and every day to come it's in Christ's name we pray Amen Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week.
My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life, and my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.